Uh, hello there. Um, figured I'd kind of do a quick little follow-up. That's there'll be a second episode and last one of the series of uh, of this guy right here. Now that's plugged in at the moment, so I don't and trapped under something else. So oh, there we are. The this uh, ThinkPad T500 series, it was um, flashed with the Reboot, so it doesn't have a traditional BIOS anymore. And it's running uh, Triscale GNU Linux. I believe it's the latest release. If I go to triscale.info... Ah, try doing this one-handed. Yep, I think I got it. Yep, it's got 8.0 on here. Um, uses an interface called Mate, which is um, which was forked from version two of GNOME, and now it it's evolved into you know something a little bit better. But yeah, um, what can I do with this machine? Uh, it turns out I can do quite a bit of stuff. I can do, you know, email if I wanted to, depending on who the provider is, iStove, which is more or less an unbranded Thunderbird. Or I could use an online deal, or or one of their clients is an app image, depending on who the provider is. I can go to Neo Cities and create a free website with this if I wanted to. But yeah, there. Their current, Triscoll's current plans, of course, is you know, um, let's see. They're now, you know, working on you know version 9 and what have you and I believe they even have um, a couple of employees now so the beauty about this is it's somewhat of a modern OS that can run on hardware like this that's more or less quote unquote uh, liberated and by liberated, I mean they can actually, um, you know, run various things on it, and none of it's proprietary. And that's the cool part. I can do some multimedia stuff. I can, I can do office stuff on here. You know, this got it has a plethora of ports. It even has a courage port. Actually, a separate headphone and microphone jack, which is actually pretty cool. And I believe it has I believe it has a card slot too for for you know flash media cards and things like that, which is awesome. And of course the PC card slot. Gotta love those. So I could plug in like say one of those you know sound blaster cards if I wanted to. VGA port and of all things a display port which is kind of shocking. I would just need an adapter to plug it into a TV, but all the same, it's just pretty neat. Of course, I have a modem. I'm not sure if modem works. Not that I would need it. I have no use for that. Um, brings me to the uh, limitations of something like this that have nothing but 
quote-unquote free Libre software on it. Obviously, I'm not going to run Windows on this thing. Um, and even if I did run Windows on this thing, um, it's not going to run the latest games very well because the hardware is somewhat limited. Uh, the reality is it is much more difficult to liberate the firmware of other systems from their perspective that are newer because of how Intel does things now. And AMD does too. Ironically, you hear about AMD, you know, contributing to the open source community, quote unquote, open source. The big issue though is that the graphics chips still utilize proprietary firmware, right? So if you want to go along those lines and just have nothing but liberated stuff, um, your options are actually limited to older hardware like that. Which, by the way, nothing wrong with it. It's still capable, even in 2019. Um, I can still do a lot of normal stuff, and since the way that these projects work, um, this is uh, more optimized. The coding is more optimized, and everything else, you know, better optimization, is going to lead to better performance overall. Um, this thing came up fairly quickly, um, relatively speaking, even with a spinning hard drive in it, because the idea behind Libre Boot, which is an offshoot of Core Boot, is to get the cruft out of the way so that you can just get into the OS and start working, whatever you're doing, um, which is nice. Only downside is you may run into some minor quirks every now and then, like like you know graphical glitches on occasion. But that may not even be the firmware's fault entirely. So it it's kind of hit or miss depending on what it is. And these think pads are very very friendly to Core Boot slash Libre Boot, both of them. But again, you're limited to Intel Core 2 Duo series of processors for the most part, if you're wanting to go from the firmware up. Um, if you don't care about firmware, then you could probably run it on more stuff, like your Core i5s and what have you. Um, the only issue being, if you really, really, really subscribe to the mindset of I want everything to be liberated, uh, on that front, then it may not be the option for you. Which brings me to the final point. The older hardware, it still functions perfectly well. Um, it's still got enough oomph to where you can do some streaming video. The graphics chip is just powerful enough to do, to do some of the video rendering. And you can play some light, very lightweight games on it with no problem at all. Um, it's great to have something like that happen to where the BIOS can be gotten rid of and what have you to prevent things like what I just sat down to the right of me from winding up in the landfill. Um, that's where I find it to be most useful of all. Because Though this channel will be more about retro computing from applications to OS's to hardware and what have you, sometimes you can breathe new life into older things using different stuff. And that's a miracle all by itself. Like, can you imagine buying this for less than $200? Less than 200 bucks has 8 gigs of RAM in it. Okay, maybe only a 250 gig hard drive, but also has a, this thing also has a DVD burner. You can write CDs and DVDs on it and read them. Um, most of your systems nowadays don't come with an optical drive. And 
And that's fine, but uh, there's still a use for optical drives, particularly burning DVDs, because there are people in rural areas that may not have access to the internet. So passing stuff back and forth on an optical disc, there's still a place for that, believe it or not. And the cool part about industrial-made computers like this, over here, is that, you know, it's durable and it's going to last a while. Um, they're built well for a reason. And the ThinkPad logo, it, you know, reminds me of IBM before all that was, you know, given over to Lenovo and what have you. And those things are very, very friendly to a lot of, you know, free Libre stuff, like Libre Boot and Triscal. Um, and in a sense, having, you know, non-proprietary stuff is actually kind of liberating for me as well. If I want to work on something very private, and I only want minimal access to the internet, not the, the wireless device inside of here is incapable of jumping onto a Wi-Fi network. But I have access to tons and tons of tools and software that I have to learn how to use it, but once I do, I can get various things done. I can keep it separate from everything else. And that's very nice to have. Um, I want to go off somewhere in a park or something I'd have to test the battery before it did that because I don't know what condition this battery is in. Luckily I can probably get reconditioned ones, but my mileage is going to vary on that, which is the main problem. With older stuff like this, at least I can swap out battery packs. Um, newer systems, it is inside, the, so inside of it that you would have to practically take the whole thing apart just to get a new battery. Um, an Acer that I own is, you know, that doesn't have an optical drive at all. That's a problem I, I have. You know, not a personal problem, just a challenge that I have to deal with. Um, and some of the things that, you know, dealing with. I, I do like the idea of how this looks and everything else, and the wallpaper is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it's a good theme. Nothing that glares at you, it's just calm and serene. Which is, you know, which might be what you're looking for. And for regular usage, 8 gigs of RAM is more than enough, it's more than plenty. It would probably run on four pretty well, but eight, eight is actually kind of a minimum for Windows 10, depending upon you know your processor. And even on a tiny ThinkPad that I own, that has 10 on it, eight gigs of RAM, it's not going to run the fastest even with a solid state drive because of the processor that's only dual core. And that's okay. Um, that's one that I'm, that's a glorified typewriter for me anyway. But the classic, you know, mechanical feel of the keyboard on this, you know, it, it, it brings back some very positive memories of the old computers in the computer lab in high school I went to. So it brings back some very, very fond memories of, of going going to school and messing around on the computers a little bit. And this was, you know, DOS and Windows 3.11 for work groups. Um, I was gradu- I'll put it to you this way. I was graduating from high school in 2002 when they finally upped everything to Windows 98 and Office 2000. Yeah, that's how out of date we all were. Although Windows 98 
still had some staying power during two, you know during that year. Like it was, it was quite an ordeal. Um, everybody had moved on to like say Windows 95, and our school was still using Windows 311 for work groups with no Bell netware. But um, so I. I do have an appreciation for older stuff, partially for that reason, because it still worked for the purpose that it was needed for. Um, it may not have been the latest or the greatest, but computers, even back then, well, especially back then, they they cost quite a bit. But now that they've come down in price, it's more affordable to keep swapping them out every so often. I have no idea what computers that school runs nowadays. I don't know if they they switched if they went with boutique offerings or switched to like Dittall or whatever. But you know, here we have an older system that works pretty well, runs nothing but free library software. And I can do a lot of normal stuff like write a word document, well word processing document. I can publish it as an old school Word file, or kind of sort of a docx, but I don't know how Word would import it. I can do graphics with GIMP and Inkscape. Um, I added the OpenShot PPA to this thing so that I have the latest version of OpenShot. Because let's face it, the newer version of OpenShot has more features and improved on some old ones. Um, th this does come in handy from some stuff, but there are other things that it wouldn't be good for, like running certain forms of commercial software. I would not attempt it. Um, not even through Wine, because I don't know how well that would run at all. And again, that would give the likes of RMS probably an amorism deep down inside. And I kind of want to keep the free library theme on this system intact. And to kind of see where things have gone, what works, what doesn't. Um, there's so much stuff I haven't done on it yet, like try to plug in like certain media cards and USB drives and what have you, just to see what would work. And you know what? I'm looking forward to doing all of that. Um, this. This um, will be the last, you know, episode of the T500 series, at least for this channel. I will probably create a separate channel just to cover, you know, talk about free Libre software. Not just open source, free Libre software. It takes things a step further than that. And, you know, causes people to think about things a little bit more like, do you really own your devices? Um, and it having people pushing to that far of an extreme is actually helpful because you know back then even with proprietary software years ago we had a little bit more say in the matter um, because we weren't so connected to the internet not that connecting to the internet today is necessarily a bad thing but now we have instances of you're basically more or less told what apps you are or are not allowed to install. Um, with Android devices, you kind of have a, somewhat of a choice for now. That may change down the road. Google may not like you being able to access their services well on a device that lets you install apps from any source you want. They may shut that off at some point. Who knows? Um, iOS, you don't have much of a choice. You would have to basically um, risk breaking your device, possibly, to jailbreak your phone just to install the apps you want on it. And that's just you know, do you own your device? You know, you know, people wouldn't have thought 
about this back in the day. You know, they just want their toaster to make their toast and their coffee maker to brew their coffee and be done with it. And now you have things regarding coffee pods to where if it's not an authorized pod, it won't brew the cup of coffee. You have farmers who are having to contend with the very notion that they're not allowed to work on their own tractors. Um, <laughs> those sorts of things where you're told you don't have a choice in the matter. And it's good to have organizations like the Free Software Foundation out there to remind people that you know you need to think about this because something could happen that could have either at the very least inconvenience you heavily or cause an immense amount of harm to you and could go further if you don't have a say so in the matter and you know people like Richard Stallman as controversial as they are they do deserve credit for bringing that to the public's attention now, I have my own views on free software that those figures may not agree with. At the end of the day, I believe it is the creator's choice of what they want to be done with it. Because I, I, I strongly believe in the idea of a truly you know, free market. That means everybody has a choice in the matter whether it's individuals all the way up to companies they have a choice in the matter and they should keep having a choice in the matter and if I don't like what a company's doing I just don't buy their products I don't partake in their services um, you know Blizzard is a great example of that um, I'm probably not going to buy any more of their games for a while and that's okay um, I'm not going to exactly stop playing what I've already purchased but because of how, how they handled a particular situation overseas I understand why they still didn't handle it correctly um, they should have given that you know pro player just a slap on the wrist and said you lost 50% of your prize money and 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 said you will not be allowed to compete in the near future for a while we're not doing this because of pressure or blah 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 we're doing this because if you're going to say something like that and get into politics, you have your own platform to do it on. Do not do it on ours. Do it on yours. Don't drag us into the middle of this fight. We want no part of it. Some people may have grumbled, but if they, I believe if they handle it like that instead of, you know, going way too harsh on him, uh, it would have wound up better for that company. But because they didn't stop and think, and they honestly did kowtow to pressure, that's my reaction to them. Um, but it's a different philosophy, and I appreciate the philosophy behind free software and the GNU General Public License. Because, again, I believe people should have a choice in the matter. And if you can't have people working on source code, uh, where are the future developers going to come from if examples are limited, and if people are not allowed to collaborate and share freely as they wish? Um, I think both proprietary and Libre software can coexist, although in many cases it, was, it would be separately, but I think they can still coexist to an extent because there's the reality of the real world where you have to be able to avoid certain legal liabilities and I'm not just talking copyright or patents or whatever 
you know, there, there's some cases where there are privacy implications and things like that, or other legal nuances, too, that we may not be taking into consideration. And that's, those are issues that are going to have to be worked out. And we can't just say, oh, intellectual property is just some, you know, falsely smashing together copyright and patents. They call it that for a reason, because it comes from somebody's head who has an idea, or a group of people's heads who have an idea, and bring something to market. And unfortunately, there are bad actors in that area, too. And in some cases, as we go through, you know, hit computing, personal computing history on this channel, we're probably going to run into some companies that actually went out of business because of their bad acting. And other individuals who probably got in trouble because they claimed that something was theirs well after it came into fruition and has been used for ages. Um, it's the dishonesty that hurts everybody. And I can understand why there's a pushback against software patents. I, the bad acting doesn't help any. At the same time, we have to accept the reality that when somebody creates something, it's their baby too. And they don't want anything bad happening to it. Well, that's all for now. I'm going to see if this thing actually worked. If it didn't, I'll just record a much shorter video without that memory card adapter in it. Um, but, uh, let's see. Drag this thing closer to me. 26 minutes. Not bad. Not bad at all.